Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome back to the next episode of uh, Nakshebazi. आज हम लोग फिर से मैप्स की हेल्प से एक नया टॉपिक जानेंगे समझेंगे एंड एनालाइज करेंगे राइट द टॉपिक विच आई हैव इन माइंड फॉर यू पीपल इन दिस सेशन इज द जर्नी ऑफ टू चाइनीज ट्रैवलर्स टू इंडिया थ्रू मैप्स आई एम गोइंग टू ट्रेस द पाथ विच दे ट्रैवल्ड एंड आल्सो हाईलाइट व्हाट व्हाट वर देयर की कंट्रीब्यूशंस राइट तो इन दोनों के बारे में आज हम लोग जानेंगे पायान वॉज द अर्थ इनफैक्ट पायान इज कंसिडर्ड एज दर्स्ट चाइनीज पिलग्रिम टू एंटर द सब कॉन्टिनेंट राइट एंड इनके बाद हजारों की संख्या में थाउजेंड ऑफ चाइनीज पिलग्रिम्स दे केम एंड वाई डिड दे कम दे कम हियर दे केम हियर बिकॉज दिस वॉज द प्लेस ऑफ बर्थ ओरिजिन ऑफ बुद्धिज्म एंड बुद्धिज्म Mahayan Buddhism was becoming very popular across China, and a lot of people wanted to come here, travel here, get hold of the original books, original philosophies, right? Uh, and they came and visited places such as Nalanda, Vikramshila, Somapura, all those monastery universities, and these accounts. Uh, they give us good information regarding this period green sang enters india uh, somewhere around 400 ce and he stays in india for around 12 years this is precisely the time period of uh, your uh, chandragupta the second isn't it chandragupta the second so he is in his writings he is talking about chandragupta's uh, uh, you know uh, uh, india as well although he is not mentioning chandragupta directly but he i mean he's talking about the society of that time similarly huang san huang san he comes to india almost uh, you know more than 200 years uh, after huang san in 630 and he stays in india for 17 long years and at this point of time north india is under harsh a lot of north india is under harsh of kanauj so he mentions uh, about uh, those aspects and those time periods so keeping all this in mind let's proceed and see how they uh, uh, traveled taking of course pahian first we will start off with pahian kyunki ye pehle aaye the uh, one interesting aspect which you can keep in your mind is that this fellow this is pahian one of the artistic depiction of pahian uh, he was 62 years ke the when he began his journey right and uh, when he came to india this is how the entire uh, gupta empire looked like Of course, I'm sure you know this. This is the Chandragupta one. This is the Samudragupta taking the uh, you know the northern campaign and the southern campaign, and Chandragupta the second, which we are dealing with right now, he was the one who defeated the Western uh, Shakas and made Ujjain his capital. It is in this context. that pahian enters india how does he come to india he takes this route he takes this route he comes from changan the starting city of the silk route he starts from here and you see hai takla makan desert ke niche se hote hue central asia and then he starts coming down jalalabad peshawar udayan takshila and finally he reaches to the gangetic heartland and he travels over the ashtamahasthan the places eight places which are associated with buddhist buddha's life four uh, places associated with his life and four places which are associated with certain miracles 
together they could you know make up ashtamahastha so he travels all of them and then he also stays at patali putra goes to tamra litte and from there catches a ship reaches sri lanka he also gives us certain ethnographic details about sri lanka talks about the status of buddhism in sri lanka and from there he catches another ship nicobar islands palembang and then finally to china so he came via land went back via sea right this is the palyans route route which he took this is one of the you know depiction of palyan in china uh, chinese have really really you know celebrated the, uh, the virtues of these uh, travelers palyan and huangsan they are huge personalities in china this is one of the statues of pai pai on that you will find so this guy pai on this is pai on right he mentions about the liberal gupta rule he mentions that the people of this country they enjoy a very liberal rule there is a uh, you know no uh, not much crime law and order seems to be pretty good in shape there's no corporal punishment no physical punishment as such capital punishment nahi hai mostly fines are collected again it indicates a very evolved administration he does however talk about our uh, you know the entire caste structure which is emerging now he talks about the varna uh, based judicial system varna based judicial system that means a brahmin he can kill a shudra but he will not have to uh, you know undergo a lot of punishment but if a shudra uh, shudra kills a brahmin then 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 he is cool she is cool right so uh, varna based judiciary judicial system that's one again very something which i'm sure you would agree modern sense mein badi ajeeb si baat lagti hai uh, he also makes reference to Uh, about he also makes a reference about the chandals he says that these are the lowest you know groups socio economic group in this hierarchy of caste they live outside the main village and they carry uh, they they uh, carry the worst of the livelihoods they deal with animal flesh etc human flesh human body as well they would bury the dead or burn the dead etc and these chandals they were supposed to carry a clapper a wooden clapper was tied around their neck and they were supposed to tap it every time when they are entering the main stream to announce that a kachhu ba raha hai and to save yourself so he's talking about chandals indicating that by this time our caste system had started systematically excluding the large number of people outside the mainstream society Right. This is the the Wayne Sand, right? This is Wayne Sand. Again, I would like you to notice his route. His route, the uh, red line indicates the direction, the route which he took while coming to India. He travels a lot in India. He travels much more in India. Do you see? He travels much more in India compared to Fahyan. He stays here for seventeen years, and what is much more interesting, at least I find it uh, very interesting, was that he did not prefer a ship to go back. Rather, he decided to go back via the land route only. He went back via the land route only. Six twenty-nine to six forty-five around. This is the timeline. 
when uh, we believe that uh, Huin San was in India. And he is describing all these roots. He's talking about what is the status of uh, Buddhism in these areas. He is happy that Buddhism is flourishing. But he's also noticing certain uh, uh, elements of decline seeping in. When Pahyan came to India, Buddhism was at its zenith. When this fellow is coming in, even now, Buddhism is doing very good. Mahayan Buddhism is doing very good. But the challenge from Hinduism and other, uh, you know, uh, 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 Jainism, etc., is becoming strong. And he notices it. He notices it. The decline which is about to set in in Buddhism. He notices it. Right? Uh, uh, okay. So this is one thing which you should notice here probably. That the uh, visit of Wayne Sang was uh, much more uh, India specific. He stayed here and traveled a lot. Okay, sir. And in fact, he crossed Windhya's as well. Right? Uh, Wayne Sang is called as a Prince of Pilgrims. Prince of Pilgrims, a very interesting story this guy has. He got interested into Buddhism. He was very influenced in Buddha, from, uh, Buddhist philosophy right from his young age. And wanted to uh, become a monk. He became a monk. Right? And uh, he was uh, interested in yoga chart philosophy. Yoga chart is a philosophy which was uh, developed by Asang and uh, Vasu Bandhu brothers. They were two brothers. This is the Mahayana Buddhism uh, philosophy, which believes that the only the mental reality, only the mental image is real. The material world is not real. Only the material image is real. There are three schools, in fact, I would like to clarify here uh, itself. There is one which is known as Saraswati, uh, Sarvasti Vada. Sarvasti Vad believes that everything is real, mental as well as the material, physical world. Right? Uh, your uh, Shunyavadi, they believe nothing is real. And Yogachar believes your only mental state is real. Right, you get me, you get me, right? So uh, he was this this fellow Wayne Sang was interested in yoga chart, but he was not happy. But I would like to clarify here. Pahyan came to India because he was not happy with the Vinay rules. He was not happy with the monastic rules for nuns and uh, the, you know uh, monks. As Buddhism has traveled across China, a lot of different interpretations have uh, emerged. And a lot of people were uncomfortable ki ye kaisa hai? by this, uh, you know, uh, contradictions. So, uh, uh, Pahyan decided that I will go to the horse's mouth and find out. So, Pahyan in 400 CE came for Vinay rules, looking for Vinay texts. Wayne sang. He was a Buddhist and he was interested in yoga char. He was looking to find out the yoga char abhidham. That means the yoga char philosophy. He wanted the original text of that. And looking for that, he came to India. Got himself enrolled at Nalanda. Had a tutor known as Seel Bhadra. Who taught him yoga chart? And Wayne Sand describes in detail the working of uh, Nalanda Monastery University. Right? Uh, his knowledge and everything was, uh, you know, uh, uh, Wayne Sand, he became so much well known because of his command over the subject that even kings such as Harsh. And king of Ahom, Assam, they wanted to, they patronized him. 
They patronized him. Right? Huang San visited Bamiyan as well. This is where he saw uh, the two huge statues, the two huge statues of Buddha, which were blown away by Taliban in 1999, I guess. They were a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but they were brutally destroyed. Right? So he talks about those two statues as well. He talks about those two wonderful statues built in the Gandhara style of architecture at Bamiyan. So when Payan came to India, Buddhism was at its peak, right? You remember I told you why when Wayne Sang enters India, he, he, he's very proud. He tells us that there are more than two lakh monks. He counts them. He is monastery made so many monks, this monastery, so many monks. He counts around two lakh monks. But still, he also notices the, the challenges which are coming up, especially in South. He travels to South. What challenge am I talking about? Remember, this is the same period. He's 7th century CE. Hai. This is the same period when a lot of Alvars and Nayanars were reviving Hinduism. Isn't it? Yeah. So he notices that. He notices that. This is one of the statue of the Huin Sang that we can see in China. Uh, his Sanskrit name was Mokshadeva when he got himself enrolled here at Nalanda. Then this was his uh, Sanskrit name, Mokshadeva. Monk Mokshadeva, right? Pyara Nam Henka Uh His records are, in fact, very detailed. He talks not only about the route, he talks about the kingdom, describes the boundaries of the kingdom, the size of the capital, right? Every kingdom which he goes to, he does this. The soil, the agriculture produce, the climate, the inhabitants, what is their character like, personality like, their clothes, what is their writing style? What kind of an economy, money they use? What is the government, nature of its government? The kings, right? Terms of law, legal norms and codes he's also interested in. So he's not commenting. His book is not all Buddhist observation. No. Right? That is why Owen Science records are actually considered very important for us. His travels were not without danger. He was robbed twice. He almost lost his life twice. And see where? Once in Punjab and once in Ayodhya. Bayan on one hand has told us that the law and order of this country seems to be wonderful. And here we see that the traveler himself, he has been robbed twice. He doesn't make any comment. On law and order of the situation, but we can guess. We can guess that probably the law and order situation is declining. Do you notice one thing? Bache, they go the time period between Fahyan and Huayn Sang. This is precisely the time period. They go, Yaha Kon hai, Chandra Gupta hai, or Yaha Kon hai, Hashta hai. Between them, Somewhere, our history transitions from ancient to medieval. In medieval, mein yahi to hota hai, no centralized control. Highways become unsafe. That's precisely what is happening here. Hatshika ke rule hai, it is somewhere at the juncture where ancient India transforms into medieval. And we can notice that from Huang Sang's writings as well. Uh, as I was telling you, he gave very detailed descriptions of locations. Bahut pyaar se nuna samjhaye ki dekho bhai monastery yahan par hai, Kanishka ka stupa yahan par hai. 
because of all the information which he gave the archaeologists were able to uh, rediscover and uh, you know kya kehte hain unki they were able to rediscover a lot of the stupas monastery remains the ruins etc because of the description which has been provided by rain sand we were able to find out this this is known as kanishka's casket or reliquary where the remains ashes of the buddhist leaders will be kept and buried under the stupa so kanishka's reliquary was discovered because of wayne sang's wonderful uh, descriptions he is also credited with this guy also credited with conducting he visited kashmir he stayed there for uh, almost two years and he was able to describe the people living in kashmir the tribes that were living in kashmir so this is considered as one of the earliest ethnographic studies of kashmir right this guy was also interested in art and architecture and made uh, interesting observations there as well nalanda ke bare mein bahut kuch inhone bataya dekhiye i'll just you know maybe repeat a couple of points here uh, he talks of uh, he, he says that monk, monks from all over asia they attended the lectures at uh, you know nalanda and the subjects which were being taught look at the array of subjects grammar logic buddhist philosophy sanskrit medicine and even magical works right uh, this is uh, a painting of monk shil bhadra right and wayne sang together this is this was the teacher at nalanda uh, now uh, wayne sang had a very interesting the set of interaction with the uh, harsh i also want to speak on that for next 2 3 minutes right so uh, wayne sang uh, wrote down uh, his book once he was back in china and he described about uh, uh, you know he described what he saw when he was with harsh harsh met him harsh ke harsh belonged to this dynasty known as a pushya bhuti right so the uh, person who founded this dynasty his name was pushya bhuti right pushya bhuti he worshiped shiva harsh ke jo father the के जो फादर थे प्रभाकर वर्धन ही हिमसेल्फ वॉज अ सन वर्शिप द एल्डर ब्रदर ऑफ हर्षवर्धन हुज नेम वॉज राज्यवर्धन वॉज अनायान बुद्धिस्ट अनियानी बुद्धिस्ट एंड हर्षा सिस्टर राज्यश्री टू वाइल हंस was a mahayani buddhist within a family within a ruling family do you see so many different religions being uh, uh, followed what does that tell you it tells you about the fluidity of the times there were no clear religious uh, divisions it also indicates that because of mahayana influence Buddhism increasingly came closer and closer to Hinduism, and found it very tough to create an individual identity. And as a result, you know, Buddha was uh, assimilated within Hinduism as the one of the Dashavata, right? So uh, in the 643, Harsh organized two assemblies, and both these assemblies were attended by Wayne Sang. Wayne Sang presided over them. 
he was a huge fan of uh, this guy, Hing Sang, right? So, uh, Kannauj assembly took place in 643 and few months later, Prayag assembly took place. This was an every five year tradition, which Harshu followed. Let's see what happens here. So, Kannauj assembly, this was uh, primarily done to uh, what should I say? Promote Mahayan Buddhism. As, uh, the king patronized it. Right? Uh, Green Sang was the chairman of this uh, Kannauj assembly. At this assembly, several, not several, in fact, two attempts were made one on the life of Green Sang and one on the life of Harsh, indicating that people weren't happy with this kind of an alliance of a foreign traveler and uh, a local king, local powerful king. So uh, the priestly class, the Brahmins were not entirely happy with this dominance of Mahayan Buddhism. Interesting. Uh, once Mahayan Buddhism came nearer to Hinduism, its predominance was out of question now because it doesn't have any separate identity. Right? Now, these are a couple of interesting lines and I would like you to uh, you know, follow me as I read them. 900 years separated Harsh from uh, uh, you know, Ashoka. Ashoka came in 300, uh, you know, around 280 to 70 BCE. And this guy is coming in around 630. 900 years separate them. Ashoka patronized Buddhism, but he laid emphasis on the ethical aspects. Harsha, he championed Mahayan Buddhism, and he laid emphasis on image worship of Buddha. Do you see the way Mahayan Buddhism is closer to Hinduism? Jise kehte hai, Pauranic Hinduism. Right? Maybe in some other lecture, I would maybe talk about it in greater detail. Right? Main fir se bol raho. Na, bachche. Main kya kehna cha raho aapse? Ki, uh, Pauranic Hinduism mein, Murti Puja, Image Worship, Dashtavatar, all these elements are very strong. And when... Uh, the same became features of Mahayan Buddhism. It came very close to Puranic Hinduism. And now it was out of question that uh, Mahayan Buddhism can become the predominant religion in this subcontinent. Something on those lines, right? Uh, the Kannauj assembly was followed by a spectacular assembly at Prayag. And here at the Prayag assembly, uh, royal charities were made to, to common people. To common people, royal charities were made, right? It was known as Maha Moksha Parishad. Ye har paach saal mein ek bar harsh karte the, and I want you to read what Hoeng Sang said about this assembly in his own words, of course, translated, right? Uh, so he would carry on just throwing all the gems away. He would distribute it among the people and see how, the, you know, Vin uh, Sang writes. He says, by this time, the accumulation of five years, accumulation which the treasury has done, was gone was exhausted, except the horses, elephants, and military accou accoutrements, that means military weapons, etc. Everything else was given in charity to poor people. The king would freely give away all his jewelry, all the good cloth which he is wearing. And see, see, this is, this is so awesome. He would beg from his sister Rajya Shri for an ordinary, worn, torn, second-hand garment. And he will wear it. 
and move once again back to his capital to run his country once more for five years and then whatever he accumulates he repeats the cycle because he believed that, that state must not fall beyond the point right and uh, this is all great information which is coming from uh, the works of these uh, wonderful uh, Chinese gentlemen uh, I hope you guys are liking the uh, work here. I hope you guys are uh, enjoying whatever we are serving you here. Our objective will always be to somewhere give you an additional insight on every topic which we pick up. Kahi na kahi hum aapko ek aisi cheez denge jo aapko achhi lagegi sunke ek naya anokha cheez dene ki koshish rahegi har ek video mein. Please, uh, you know. अगर कमेंट शॉमेंट करने का मन हो तो कर देना अगर लाइक शाइक करने का मन हो तो वो भी कर सकते हो बाकी रेस्ट इज अप टू यू गाइस यू गाइस आर द बेस्ट जज यू अराउंड बाय बाय हैव फन